How to fill out W-4 single 2020. Welcome to our channel, Clear Value Tax. My name is Brian Kim. I'm a certified public accountant. And in today's video, we will walk you through how to fill out the W-4 if you are single. So this video is for the W-4 2020 edition. This is completely different than the 2019 edition. So this video is aimed at those people who are single and are not working more than one job at a time. So if you're single, and you're working more than one job at a time or you are married, you know, that's a different scenario. And please see my other video about the full W4 tutor tutorial walkthrough. So the most easiest scenario to fill out the W4 is if you're single with one job. So that's why I'm making this video aimed at that situation, just to save you some time so you don't have to walk through those more complex situations. So this will be a time saver. So I hope you enjoy. We're gonna walk through the form. Please stay tuned. Welcome to the W4 2020. So let's go line by line. Let's start at the very top. This should be very quick because again, this is a situation where you're single, working one job at a time. So here, this should be self-explanatory, step one. They're asking for your first name, middle initial, your last name, your social security number, your address, and then you're gonna be marking off this box, single. So again, in this scenario, you are not working multiple jobs and you are not married. So this section is completely inapplicable to you. So we're just going to skip on to step three. Step three is where you're claiming dependents. So if you have qualifying children under age 17 or you have other dependents, most commonly it would be you're supporting a parent or parents. So they would be dependents. So in these situations, you would receive a tax credit, which would reduce your taxes. So in that situation, you want to take that into account so that your payroll system knows that you should withhold less taxes in these situations. So if you have a child that's under 17, then per child, you get a $2,000 tax credit. So multiply how many children you have by 2,000 and you write it here. So if you have two children, then you would write 4,000 here. If you have one child, you write 2,000. If you have zero children, then you write none. And the same concept would apply for any other dependents. So you would tally that and total that here. So in this case, you can do 2,000 if you have one child. But in this situation, let's say we have no children. So then in that case, you would just leave this completely blank. Moving on to step four. So this is the section where you will be identifying where you have other income outside of your job where it will be taxable income, but no taxes are being withheld. So in that situation, if you're going to have taxable income, but no taxes are being withheld on that income, then that's going to be a tax deficiency, a tax shortage. So that could cause you to have a tax balance due. So here's the section where you can make up for that fact and hold a little extra taxes on your paycheck so that you are withholding some taxes to cover that fact that you will have taxable income where no taxes are withheld. So for example, usually if you have interest income, if you have dividend income, and sometimes retirement income, that'll be taxable income, but you will not be holding taxes on that income. So again, that's in a lot of situations. So if that's the fact, where you have this, these forms of income with no taxes withheld, then you wanna identify that here to make up for that fact and have a little extra taxes withheld on your paycheck so that you are not going to have a large tax balance due. So in this case, let's write that, um, you know, for example, I have $2,500 in interest income and dividend income. So no taxes are being withheld on that income. So I could hold a little extra taxes on my paycheck to make up for that. So this is, the, this is the section where you can achieve that. So moving on to step 4B, the deductions. This is the section where you are going to be relaying the information that you will be having more deductions than the standard deduction. So essentially that you will be itemizing your deductions. Because if you're itemizing your deductions and you have more deductions than the standard deductions, then you're going to be paying less taxes. So you want to relay that information to the payroll system so you withhold less taxes. So if you're going to be claiming the standard deduction, you already know that, the $12,400 standard deduction, then you're done with this form. You don't need to write anything for B or C. All you need to do is sign and date and you're good to go. 
But if you know that you're going to be itemizing your deductions or you've historically been itemizing, then you need to fill out the deduction worksheet on page three. That's a very simple form right here. So you just walk through the instructions. Basically, you're just looking at your schedule A. This is your itemized deductions. If you, the most accurate way to do so would be to look at your 2020 tax return. However, if you didn't complete your 2020 tax return yet, you can look at the 2019 tax return, the Schedule A, and see how much your itemized deductions were. And then you fill in these fields and just walks you through to what you're going to be inputting on Step 4B. So that's the area to identify that you will be itemizing your deductions. So let me just put it this way, though. If you're, if you're not a homeowner, if you don't have a mortgage and you're not making a great amount of charitable contributions or you don't have large medical expenses, then you're going to most likely be taking the standard deduction and you can just ignore this field, the step 4B deductions, because you're going to be claiming the standard deduction for 12400 If you have a home and a mortgage, you will most likely be filling out this section, step 4B deductions, because you're most likely going to be itemizing your deductions. You're most likely going to have a mortgage interest deduction. You're most likely going to have property tax deductions. And most states have state income taxes. So with those, most likely it will be above the 12,400 mark, which is greater than the standard deduction. So you will be filling out this portion because it'll be applicable to you. But again, if it's going to come out close to 12,400 mark, then you really don't need to, you know, fill out this section. But if you're going to be well over the standard deduction, yes, you should take the time to fill out this section, the 4B, which again is on the deductions worksheet on page three. So that is the W4 2020 in a nutshell. I mean, it's one page long. So let me switch over. Well, thank you so much for tuning in with me on that one. I tried to make this case specific for you guys because I don't want you to waste your time watching the unnecessary parts if, of course, they're inapplicable to you. So I hope this abbreviated version was simple enough. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And also, please subscribe since, um, I mean, come on. I mean, taxes are so boring. I'll be the first to admit that. But we're always making great content that is very practical to you. And we want to be your tax resource. So please subscribe. And until next time, thank you so much. Take care.